All right. Hey, everybody. This is the Frederick Review, and we are here today with Nathan Kerr, and he is the business owner of PMC Cert DC, and they do PMP training. They offer high energy and interactive local and online training based on award winning course curriculum that will enable you to leave training confident that you will pass your examination on the first attempt. Additionally, they pride themselves on providing excellent service before, during, and after your course. This includes seven day per week customer service that is extremely responsive. Responsive. So with that, um, Nathan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, why don't you just introduce yourself, tell us a bit more about your business and kind of how you got your start with this. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Nathan Kerr. I am a project management professional. Uh, I do own PM Cert DC. It is a veteran owned and woman co-owned business. Awesome. That's hundred percent local here. I got my start because while I did 22 years in the Army and towards the end of my career, the Army paid for me to get my certification um, after graduate school in project management. So uh, the, the project management professional or PMP certification is the gold standard in the industry. And so I took a course myself, two courses actually, and sat for the examination. And thank God I passed it on the first <laughs> attempt because it's a very, very tough examination. Right, yeah. You there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So, um, I'm already go. I'm already looping into the curve. Uh, the Frederick Review. I don't own the Frederick Review, but the Frederick Review is also um better known. So, oh, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's interesting. So, um, so you kind of alluded to it. So, what was the spark that made you kind of want to jump in and actually start this business? Um, well, when I had my project management professional certification. Um, I noticed that a lot of people were contacting me. Mostly, most of my competition, if not all of it, is either international owned or nationally owned. So right. they don't have their own instructors in the area. So my competitors actually hire me out to teach their courses. So when I, when I went through my own course and then I started teaching their course, I noticed that they're the way they did the curriculum just wasn't conducive to really learning project management and being able to pass the exam. And so I said, there's gotta be a better way. And, um, I kind of went in on my own since I was already being hired out by my competitors. Right. I decided, Hey, I'll start my own school and I still get hired out by them. But now I have my own school and it's a hundred percent local owned. That way we have very responsive customer service and I can keep my prices lower yeah. than the competition as well because I'm not having to hire an instructor. I do all my own instruction. Why do you think, uh, I mean, do you think distance kind of played the role in at the, at the beginning, you kind of mentioned how they didn't, it wasn't really conducive to success. Is that, do you, could you really pinpoint why or how, or is it just kind of, well, yeah, the, the curriculum that they use is, is done in what I think is a very lazy fashion. Uh, basically our Bible for project management is the guide to the project management body of knowledge, what we call the PMBOK. Okay. And the way they teach the curriculum is by chapter order. Well, that's not the logical way that a project flows. So if you put your curriculum in the way that a traditional project flows, then you jump all over that PMBOK. And that's why I teach it in that manner. And that's why my students have such a high success rate. So their, the so their way was kind of like good in theory, but in practice, a little difficult, and you kind of went the practice route sort of deal. Well, it's harder to develop curriculum that is out of chapter order. Right. And I do, do believe that they ought to take money and time to pay for their curriculum to be developed in the logical order. So it's easier just to go chapter by chapter right. and basically grab bullet points out of the pin box as you go. Gotcha. And then you being local just helps that so much because you actually maybe have the time to get really specific because you're helping people that are, you know, closer to you and all that, all things like that. That's right. And I live or die on customer reviews in the right. local area, whereas an international company, they can they can have low reviews in one area of the country and maybe try right. to get their reviews up in another area of the country and then it all averages out. But with my the difference for us is A, that we're a lower price than most of the competitors. Right. B, uh, if somebody doesn't feel ready to sit for this very tough exam, they can retake my course free of charge because I'm always having courses oh, in the awesome. local area. And C, I offer almost all my courses on the weekend so that busy working adults don't have to take time off work to take the course. Whereas 
my competition couldn't really do that right. um, because if they're flying in instructors or what have you, they would have to pay for two sets of plane tickets to do just weekends. So, yeah, that's all really interesting. I've never, I mean, this is a topic I've never experienced at all. So that's, I mean, that's all news to me. That's really cool. Um, so if you could go back uh, maybe to around the time period you were starting your business, is there a piece of advice you would give or um, to yourself? Yes. Never <laughs> over be overly optimistic of what the market is and how quickly you'll be known in the market. Um, search engine optimization is key. Make sure that you, before you go live, that you start building your presence on the internet to where you start locally ranking because advertising, even with Google AdWords or Facebook postings, can be very expensive. So uh, definitely get a presence on the internet in your local area first and make sure that you know what you're doing to get optimized for the local area. That's some sound advice. I couldn't agree more. That's kind of how the world turns nowadays. Um, so through your time uh, running PMC or DC, what has been or what has been your favorite thing? Just it doesn't maybe it doesn't have to necessarily have to be um, something super specific to PMC or DC, but just being a business owner, what has been your um, joy? Well, my joy is that you know I, I'm this is mine. So right. the success or the failure actually literally depends on me instead of just going in and punching a clock. Um, that and and I'm a people person, so I really like teaching new students. Every my classes run four days, and um, you know every every week I have new students and it's just, that's just a great, just meeting a bunch great, of awesome way to meet other new people yeah. around the area. That, that, that is cool. Um, conversely, I mean, what are some of the things or what's one big thing that you've found to be the toughest? The toughest is, uh, again, you know, getting your name out there and, and beating back, um, not your, your competitors. I'm not really trying to beat them back, but right. getting a foothold in a competitive market. Um, uh, so, you know, that definitely, that is definitely the toughest part of owning your own business, you know, and then you're not accustomed to living without a steady paycheck. You know, one month you can do $20,000 in rev revenue and then another month you might make $500. So right. you have to be able to really know how to save on the good months to cover you until your business grows. You really have to be able to be um, financially astute. Requ requires a lot of planning and, and things of that nature. Which is um, a project, yeah. Yeah. Planning. So, right now, um, or maybe previously, or where you're looking at, uh, what's the main way that you get new customers coming in for your classes? Uh, my two main ways is uh, through search engine um, and then referrals. I get a lot of referrals because people actually enjoy the class. Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's, you know, that's really good then. Well, you'd be surprised because, I mean, it's a very technical subject and it's very yeah. boring material. Right. So you have to have a dynamic speaker or a dynamic personality that's teaching the class. Otherwise, everybody would literally fall asleep in their right. chairs. No, well, I guess, well, being self-aware definitely helps that then. If you know that the, the subject matter is, is um, text heavy or content heavy, it's good to be aware of that. And, um, and it's a boot camp. It's four days. So we're cramming a lot of information right. into four days. Yeah. Uh, and so... That's just, it's like drinking from a water hose. So you have to have great curriculum and great instructors, um, you know, that will help um, uh, deliver that curriculum in a way that people are going to retain it. At least give them the foundational base knowledge that, that when they study for the next three to five weeks and sit for that exam, that they're very confident going into that exam. Right. So you alluded to it earlier um, in one of the first questions, but, you know, and you may have already covered most of it, but what's something that you feel sets you apart from your competitors uh internationally i know you alluded to but maybe you know locally too um what's what sets you apart from the rest well there's a couple things one i'm local so i live or die with customer service uh one of the chief complaints i get and and i teach for about four or five of my competitors uh, on a regular basis and the number one complaint i get is once we paid our money you can never get a hold of them heck we didn't even know if the class was really going to go on or not right and that's just a, a in my opinion a, a horrible way to feel after you dumped a uh, one or two thousand dollars on a course and then you'd never hear from them again um so that's what sets me apart is customer service day or night whether they're on my website or they text me or they call me i'm very responsive if i get a phone call and i can't take the phone call i will call them back within the 10 or 20 minutes and make sure that they're that the that they're um, that they have peace of mind that they're investing 
their money, their hard-earned money into a company that's going to deliver for them. So that's what sets me apart. I'm local. I'm live. I don't try to do gimmicks like free recorded classes and make people think that they're going to be able to pass the exam off watching pre-recorded videos. Right. All my stuff is live and local. Plus, my online classes are all taught while I'm teaching regular students in class. So it's actually done simultaneously. Oh, okay. And that's a big difference because they can interact with both other online students and in-class students. Um directly and that tacit knowledge that you get from that is is just as it's just as important as the explicit knowledge that's being conveyed so you guys have like a live stream going on something like that like how do you correct huh correct that's interesting yeah, right no... right in the class they're just another student instead of sitting in person in front of me they're sitting virtually on a computer so and now what um going off a little bit but what like is that a decision thing? Is that like, how do you decide who's going to be in classroom and who's going to be doing it online? Do they get to choose or is it yeah, like, they choose. Oh, okay. They so. choose. Um, and the reason why is because some people, if you're in say, um, Northern Michigan and right. you need a class, uh, obviously traveling out to the Washington DC Metro area would be a problem for them. And so, um, the only classes that I do not teach that way. And it's because it's new for us is that for agile certified, the agile certified practitioner for the agile project managers. We have a, we're starting to teach uh, the PMI dash ACP class for agile certified um, project managers. And that's not done live yet. But right. I mean, I'm sorry, it is done live. It's not done, done online yet. Gotcha. We only have an in-class right. portion. For that. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, that, that seems like it probably helps you guys too. Cause you get just the more people, the better, right. For you guys. I mean, Really? Well, we're not a nonprofit, um, even though we keep our prices low um, no, because I... we have lower overhead. Right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, any time that we have a paying student is obviously good for business, uh, yeah, yeah. so we can stay in business. Because if I go out of business, then that takes away one of the only local providers that I know of in the whole entire DC metro area. That's crazy to think about. This is a because this is a big area with a lot of different things going on. Really, uh, just a lot. Um, so. I feel like we keep leading in these questions really well. How has technology played a role in your business? I mean, you talk about live streaming. That seems like it's really, you know, beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Well, you know, communications, um, all these things are part of what people learn in my project management class. You know, you got to leverage technology to your benefit. But my wife being a millennial, she's 10 years younger than me, she, uh, she really has been able to leverage technology in order to get our name out there, whether it's through, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and the whole nine yards that she's involved with, as well as me creating by myself, our website and, um, you know, and being able to optimize it for the local community. You know, that all takes a lot of tech savviness. Now I will admit, I do have a graduate degree in it leadership, but that's more managing it instead right. of actually doing it. So, right, right, right. um, so I knew a lot about it. I just had to really learn how to do it now. So that, that's, that's all, that's fantastic. That it's, it must be nice having someone so close to you and got, kind of really being on the ball about things too with your wife. Yes. Um, so I know I, I asked you what's one piece of advice you'd give yourself and maybe it's the same, but what's one piece of advice you'd give to others thinking about getting into maybe not, maybe not necessarily training classes, but just really just being entrepreneurs, just starting their own businesses. Treat your, your first hundred days as a project um, to get started. In other words, initiate it, uh, plan out and meticulously plan out uh, the project itself, including, you know, listing who your stakeholders are and, and communications management plan, then execute it, monitor and control your plan and, and adjust as necessary. And um, at the end of the hundred days, hopefully you can close it out with a success, but um, don't go into expecting to make a lot of money in the beginning because it does cost a lot of money to start up a business. Just, right. you know, especially if you have like office space, like I do, um, you know, that, that it costs money. You have your, they treat it just like uh, renting an apartment or a house. You need the first month's rent. You need the yeah. deposit. Um, you're going to enter into leases. You have to get internet at your bit of your business. You have to get technology. I mean, there's just a lot that goes into it. And then second, do what I did, leverage friends and family to assist you. Do not try to do it yourself. If you're actually starting a legitimate business that's meant to be a livelihood, not just a side business like some people do Amway or what, what have you, right, right. if you're actually opening a real business that's going to be your, your actual sole source of income, 
you know, make sure that you leverage family and friends to assist you with some of the grunt work because you cannot do it yourself. You'll be up all night just right. thinking about it. That's all really good advice.